All right, guys. So <clears throat> this is the candle flip theory I've been talking about. Um, just make sure when you're doing it, your stops are always a little bit above the previous candle because of spread. You don't want to get stopped out or anything like that. And then your take profits, especially during high volume times, you're always going to want at a um, support or resistance level, your next, like wherever your first target would be, and then secure along the way. So we're just going to flip through the candles real fast. And what I've noticed is as soon as the first one flips, it shouldn't break that high and validate it. So this candle, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. We didn't break the high. There's no wick on top. And we fell. And we fell. So our target should have been a little higher. Uh, I'm going to just set it to, I'm going to close partial. Actually, we'll just take it. We still, we got 11 pips. So we'll take that. And this is our session time right here. So if you look right here, <clears throat> we are just coming to New York Open. So price goes up again. Price continues back down. Look at, see how we never came past that first candle that flipped? This one did just barely, but um, I wouldn't count that as breaking the high. And then we headed down to here. So we could have let that go, but it's always good to secure. So now watch, every time we get a good candle flip, this candle's too big. That's not a flip. You don't want to take that. Same thing there. All right, so we are past New York Open now. That candle, like I said, too big. All right, so the theory, these candles came up. We flipped. We have clean traffic down to the left. So as long as we don't break this high, we will head down to there. We never broke the high, headed down to there right here, clean traffic down. But what's important is what recently happened. So we have clean traffic to the top side, first candle flip. We're gonna take a sell. And we'll move our stop loss. This is gonna be a big stop. Sometimes you might have big stops, um, but if you're letting runners go, it'll make up for it. And uh, honestly, that's just kind of up to you. However you want to um, do that. If this is too big of a candle, that's okay. But when it is have, when we do have the high volume sessions, there's a pretty good chance you're going to have to do some um, big candle entries based on this theory. But as we go through, I might make it even better. So didn't break our high, and we fell right to our support there. Still the same session. This is all. Um, we had one trade, TP. Um, and then I believe our second trade right here, TP. So let's see if we can get another one. Look at that, we got a bullish candle. This wick is the bottom of our zone. We flipped here, we have clean traffic. Let's see what happens. Same thing again. And remember when you are, technically our momentum is to the downside, you could say. We'll put a little bit lower. So remember when you're trading against it, maybe don't target as high. So like if we have a downtrend and you catch this flip candle here, maybe don't target like a wick fill up here. Maybe target like this level here or this level, or I mean, pushing it maybe here, a little risk here. And just go off of that. Let's see, next candle. Yeah. Because then this happens. So we still hit, uh, We'll set it to break even, see what happens. But if we would have set our take profit right here, we would have smashed that. So we'll just let it play out. I'll set it to break even. We'll see what happens. And it stopped out. Oh, well. But if you would have caught this flip right here, you could have caught sales down. You see what I'm saying? Uh, let's see if we can get another setup. And then this. Okay. So the most important part is you need enough room to take this candle to here, there's not enough room. That doesn't make sense. This candle, we had room, so we got to here. This wick would have topped us out right there. Um, so this flip, not enough room. 
this flip, we have room down to here. And I have a feeling if we don't get above here, we will be heading down to there. You see what I'm saying? So your best entry, your sniper entry, you could say, is going to be that first flip. Um, we did. We would have got stopped out right there. But if you would have secured down here, you could have secured somewhere right here um, or anywhere in this wick again once this candle pushed down. Might have been safe to secure there. That's still a really good fucking move. So that's the end. We're into the um, Tokyo session now. So we'll go through one more time and see what happens. See if we can get another one. So you just want to make sure you have clean candles. That is the most important part. That one could work, but it's a little bigger than I would like to take because we only have a range up to here. So I'm going to let that one go. Yep. So it's a good thing we let that one go. This one is going to be too weak, in my opinion. But it could very well just go. Yep. So... Um, that's not our first flip, but we'll just, we'll let that one go. Let that move go. So this would have been our first flip, but not enough room there. We're getting clean candles up. So just be patient. This was, uh, this was just NY open. So, and yeah, I just ran back down. Some days it might not happen. There was a. When I was right here, there was nothing. There was no trade. We needed clean, big moves. See if we can get another nice move to play out. No. So we're at the end of NY, coming into Tokyo, Sydney session. I'm just gonna... So I can't see what this candle did, so I didn't take this one. But if you were following the one flip rule, depending on what this candle right here that we can't see looked like, this could have made a lot of sense. And then you could get a move down, but yeah. So we couldn't see, so it didn't really, didn't really matter. All right, so we got our flip. A little bigger than we like, but we are in London session, so we might get a continued move. Move stop loss up. So that last day we had moves, we went three for three. What was it? It was the one over here, and then one here, and then this one here, and then you could have caught this one. So that would have been four for four on that strategy. So let's see what, I'm going to move that up a little bit. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. See that? Normally this bullish candle would have freaked me out. Uh, I wonder how many pips that was. We'll see. So we're on a 1.5, $15 lot. We caught 20, 20 pips. We, we made $300 in one hour. Um, so whatever you guys think of it, this is what I've done and what I'm going to start only doing because on the days where there's no trade kind of in here, I mean, you could have caught this one and took it I'm somewhere out on this wick or this candle. Um, but when the candles look like this, I will just – not be trading but i need to see candles doing this so granted this stop loss was a 27 pip stop loss so make sure you're using the correct risk but your gain is going to be so much higher and your probability of winning is going to be that much higher too so even if you just scroll through back on the chart and you look every time a candle flipped look to see if it broke that low if it was a bullish candle and if you could have caught your 10 to 20 pips on the way up right here it flipped could have caught it, yes. Here it flipped, you lost that one. So you wait, you get another flip, you take it. Right here you flipped, take it. 
Um, this is there's not enough movement here. This one, um, there's not a ton of movement, but the chart is compressed a lot more in the software for it, the simulator app. So if we had this expanded in trading view, this would be a lot more room to go. And then you probably would have secured somewhere down here. Uh, let me see if we can find any more. Uh, so came down, this flip, really big flip. You still got range maybe to here or here. Um, you would have been in profit almost the entire time except for that pullback. And then once it came down, so this is gonna be your low where we flipped. So wait for the next cam to flip around this area within this wick. This one flipped, too weak, too weak. There's your flip, there you go. Um, same thing here, we get a really big move up. You're gonna be looking for buys, but you get your flip and you take it, you don't break it and you fill that wick down to there. Um, see if there's another big move. Yep, so this one would have been a really, a much bigger flip. And if you would have just held it through, so wherever you go, this might have been 10 pips, this might have been 10 pips, but if not, you could have got out here or caught this entire move if you swing, you could do that. So this strategy could actually work out really well for swing traders because we had a flip here. We should have had clean traffic up to here. If you look, we actually did make it up to that level without breaking below here. So if you're swing trading, that could be a really good um, thing to look for. Same thing here. We had our first flip here. Um, and your stop should always be a little bit above. But if you look, we'll put it right on this bearish wick right here. Nothing really. This one almost broke the high and it kind of did. But I, don't cons I wouldn't consider a half of a pip, a quarter of a pip higher breaking it. It needs to actually break it, like fully go. And we didn't do that. And we came down to here. I would have probably secured somewhere in here or here and then just been done. But these swing traders, that's probably a 50, 60 pip move. Um, <clears throat> find one more example. Mm, right here, first flip. That was a beautiful trade right there. Came back out there. So if you trade supports, you could have got in on this candle because of this clean traffic. But on this kind of stuff right here, the flips. Do not trade the flips when this happens. Wait for it to go all the way down or all the way up and then take a flip. That's when it's going to work most successfully. But if you're trading in this, this is just really, really fucking ugly. Flip here, really ugly. A flip here, up to here. No, that's not enough. It's not enough movement. You need, I would say, at least two good candles moving for it to have a good probability. The more candles that move, <clears throat> Before the flip, the better odds it's going to have on the flip. But so this one would have lost. This flip you could have taken, but there's a resistance here, so that wouldn't um, qualify as a flip. So this is kind of the theory. Um, well, I mean, you could just you could call it anything, but I'm going to call it the. Um, I wrote it down. Is it the clean traffic theory, and uh, clean traffic candle flip theory? We could say. Um, you could still just be, if you're marking zones, it probably lines up at support and resistance levels, but um, I, I just feel like that could confuse people. And if you just keep it as simple as a candle changing directions or changing colors after a clean move, it's a lot easier to understand. So uh, hopefully this helped and you guys can uh, make sense of it.